All right, guys, today for 7.2, we're going to be solving exponential equations and inequalities. Um, so for today, guys, one of the big ideas here for at least the first part of the lesson is if you have the same base, and we talked about this a lot in Algebra 1, um, so hopefully this will come back to you, but if you have the same base, okay, represented here by B, uh, then I can set this to be equal B to the X to equal B to the Y if and only if x is equal to y. Okay, so I have the same base, uh, and these things are truly equal, then x must equal y. So why is that handy to us? Well, what if I have like, let's just say, let's just put some numbers in here. What if I have uh, 3 to the x is equal to 3 to the, um, I don't know, let's just put a, a number in here, a uh, third. Okay, if this is a true statement, okay, then the then x must equal three. Okay, because three to the third is the only thing that equals three to the third. That's what this is saying. Okay, so we're gonna use that little rule today. Here it is in example one. Okay, notice we do not have the same bases here. Okay, so the first part of this lesson is we gotta be comfortable changing our bases. If we if we need to okay so here we don't have the same base so the goal is to get the same base on both sides okay so uh, 4 can be written as 2 squared if we need it um, but let's just see if we can write 64 in terms of 4 okay 64 uh, let's think about that uh, so one, one thing you could do if, as you're thinking about you know if you can write this in other terms is you can start taking roots uh, if I took the square root of 84 I would be at 8 well that's close but that's not 4 so um, so 8 squared does not work. I want something that's 4, right, when I get a root out. So if I take the third root of 64, I believe I get 4. Okay, so that's what I'm looking to do. I'm trying to get a root that is equal to the thing that's on the other side. Um, or break both sides down, right? So in this case, we could have broken everything down into 2s, but I think 4 is going to work because 4 times 4 times 4 gives me 64. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this in terms of 4. Okay, so this one is already in terms of 4s. Okay, but I'm going to write 64 as 4 to the third power. Now that I've done that, what I can do is I can get rid of these bases and just say, okay, 2n minus 1 is equal to 3. It has to be by the rule that we just talked about. Okay, so um, if I do a little bit of algebra here, I get 2n then is equal to 4. So then n is equal to, if I divide both sides by 2, it's equal to 2. And I'm done with that. Okay, And it would be a good idea to plug it back in and check it, especially on a test. So if you plugged it back in there, you would get 4 to the third. 4 to the third is equal to 64, so we know we did it right. Okay, So for 1b, I would like you guys to try this one out on your own. Uh, okay, So here we go. Let's see what you guys did here for this one. So uh, we have 5 to the 5x. I want to write this thing in terms of 5 if I can. That's the same thing as 5 to the third power, okay? This one's a little tricky because I have 5 to the third power here that I'm changing this into, but then I also have this exponent, okay? So that exponent has to act on this, so x plus 2. All right, so now my I can simply distribute this out. This, is, this 3 is a power to a power, right? So I can multiply that out. So when I multiply that out here, I get 3x plus 6 on this side. And on this side I have 5x, and I've dropped my bases. All right, so I'm just looking at the exponentials. Now I'm going to just combine like terms. Okay, so if I combine like terms here, I get 2x is equal to 6, so that means x is equal to 3. All right, so that's example 1. Then here, you guys, this is an important slide, so make sure you guys take good notes on this. Uh, so exponential functions, uh, they're in this form y equals a times b to the x. So if I'm going to create an exponential function given some data, it's important to know which, what each of these things stands for. So y, in this case, stands for the final amount of something. The a always stands for the original amount of something. The b is just the common ratio. Okay, And the common ratio, we're going to spend some time finding this in the next problem. Um, but essentially, it's, you know, um, how the thing is, is acting over a period of time. So it's a common ratio of how something's acting over time. So if you start with a beginning amount, say we start with like $2 and we end with $10, and we do this over a period of, I don't know, eight years, 
uh, it's going up by you know a dollar a year, right? So um, that pattern becomes part of the common ratio, which I'll, I'll show you in just a minute. And then X is typically a time period, almost always going to be a time period. Um, so in other words, with exponential functions, the final amount is equal to the original amount times B to the T. Okay, that's that's important. This is very important that you understand what all these things mean. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test you on it. I'm going to quiz you on it. Uh, you're going to have some on your homework. So here's example two. We'll put this to test. So as a manufacturer uh, distributed 3.2 million aluminum cans in 2005. Okay, that's important information. We have a year here. We have an amount here. In 2010, there's a new year, the manufacturer distributed 420,000 cans made from recycled cans that had previously di distributed. Assuming that the recycling rate continues, write an equation to model the distribution each year of cans that are made from uh, recycled aluminum. Um, okay, so what they want us to do is they want us to come up with an exponential equation for this. Okay, so let's try to see if we can plug it into what we know here. Okay, so remember that y is equal to the final amount, a is equal to the original amount. Okay, so in this particular case, our final amount here will be the latest amount. So in 2010, it's 420,000 cans. So I can say 420,000 is equal to the original amount, 3,200,000, okay, times B. We don't know what the common ratio is. We're trying to find that. All to the time frame. The time frame is five years. Okay, so once I know B, I can come up with an equation for this thing. Okay, so let's try this. So um, let's divide both sides by th by 3,200,000. Okay, so when we do that, we end up with, over here, we end up with 0 0.13125, I believe, is equal to B to the fifth. You have to do that on your calculator. I didn't know that by heart. I had that written down. And then here to get B by itself, I'm going to take the fifth root of both sides. Take the fifth root of both sides and we get b is equal to 0 0.666 and then it keeps going we're just going to round it to approximately 0 0.67 now once you find b we're just going to plug that b back into the equation so we're going to say okay y then is equal to and we can write out 3.2 million or you could just say that this is in millions and say okay we got 3.2 that I mean just knowing that that's a million right 3.2 millions times 0 0.67, so this is A, original amount. This is the common ratio that we just found. So this was how to find the common ratio. Okay, that's the that's the B value, the common ratio. Okay, so, uh, and then we know that the time frame, now if we wanted to make an equation for this, for any time frame, we can call the time frame X. Okay, so this is our equation our exponential equation for what's happening here with the aluminum cans. Then it says in part B, tell us what, tell us how many uh, recycled aluminum cans we'll have by the year 2050. Okay, so 45 years go by. So let's see what happens. Y equals 3.2 times 0 0.67 all to the 45th power. And if you do that, I think you end up with like 0 0.04 or something like that. Uh, so we can say essentially that there's going to be like none. There's there's uh there's there's no more cans gonna be recycled by 2050. Hopefully that's not the case, um, but we are seeing a decline in recycling right now for some reason, probably related to COVID. But uh, hopefully this pattern is not the case, and we're gonna see a lot more recycling done. Um, just my personal hope, but we'll <laughs> we'll see. Cause uh, anyway, that's a separate topic. Uh, the next thing that we need to do with exponentials is. Again, this is a very, very important equation. It comes up here, it comes up on consumer math when we do that. But we're going to find out what the what the future value of something is given a, a compounded interest formula. So here, this should look very familiar to what something you've already seen. The only thing we're going to add in here is this N piece. So what this stands for is the final amount of some investment. Okay final amount of some investment is A. P is my original amount invested, or it's also another name for that is the principal, and I don't believe it's spelled that way. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but um, 
and then we have one plus the rate as a decimal. So R stands for rate as a decimal. Okay, and then N is the number of times that it compounds in the time period. Okay, so it's it's A equals P times one plus R over N, where N is the number of times it compounds in the time frame, all to the NT, where T is time in years. Okay, so <clears throat> let's use that on this example three. It says find the account balance after 20 years of $100, placed in an account that pays 1.2% interest, compounded twice a month. It's probably pretty close to about what you can get right now, by the way. <clears throat> um, but here we go, let's try this. So we have the final amount A equal to the original principal, $100, times one plus the rate as a decimal, 0 0.012 all divided by n, which is, uh, so here's we got to be careful. This is twice a month, right? So two times a month, there's 12 months in a year. Therefore, uh, n is compounding 24 times in a year. Twice a month means 24 times in a year. So we take it over 24. Okay, and then we are going to take that all to the 24 times the time frame, 20 years. Okay, so when I do that out, uh, this is equal to 100 times 1.0005, I believe, all to the 480th power. So if you take 1.0005 to the 480th power, multiply it by 100, uh, seems like it's going to be really big, but it turns out it's going to be $127.12. Okay, so you made $27 for doing nothing for 20 years, but your money was tied up. Um, so 1.2% interest compounded twice a month. Not such a great thing, but it's better than putting it under your mattress for 20 years, I guess. Uh, so example four, the last thing we're gonna do with this is we're gonna do some inequalities. Okay, so uh, the big thing here is make the bases the same, just like we did in example one, so we can compare them, right? So for this one, um, what's interesting about this one is uh, we have to, since this is a one over, it's gonna be a negative exponent. Right, so we have three to the two x minus one is greater than or equal to. Let's see if we can turn this into something uh, with a three. And it turns out you can. If you took the fifth root of 243, you would end up with three. Okay, so this thing could be written like this. Three to the five, but we have that one over, so it's negative. Three to the negative five. Okay, so let's solve this. So we have, uh, now the bases are the same. So we have two x minus one is greater than or equal to negative five. Let's add one to both sides. So we have two x is greater than or equal to uh, negative four. So then we have x is greater than or equal to, divide both sides by two, negative two. Okay, so not too difficult. Just same thing, change a base, uh, then follow your inequality rules. You know, if you divide by a negative, you gotta flip it. Just remember some of those basic things. Here, for the 32 piece, uh, I believe we can write that in terms of two. If you took the, let's see, what would that be? <clears throat> I think it's the fifth root of 32 is, is two. Uh, but try that, make sure, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. So two to the x plus two would be greater than, this would be two, since this is a one over, this is a negative exponent, two to the negative five. Two to the five would be 32, so two to the negative five, one over 32. Now these are the same, so we have x plus two is greater than negative five, x then is greater than, uh, add two to both sides, negative three, and did I do that right? No, sorry, I subtract two from both sides. Huh. Good thing I checked myself. Okay, so I actually get negative seven, and I am done. Okay, so that's how you would solve an inequality. Um, and I think that's it, guys. So hey, uh, we'll catch you guys in class. Have fun with this stuff. This is good value for calculating your retirement accounts and such. So there's actually a lot of good application for this lesson.